when Sabrina was single advice. See how I got like all the way up here on the camera? Like that's how you need to be walking around. One thing Sabrina gonna do is cry. It's just a vibe. <laughs> Welcome to my channel If you are new here, of course, if you aren't then welcome back today I'm doing a chit chat get ready with me I asked you guys to send me questions on Instagram stories So I'm gonna go through some of these and answer them the lighting right now is not the best because the Sun's going down throughout the video uh, Or the beginning of the video the lighting looks really good And then it kind of starts to like shift just want to give you guys a little heads up there This is like a very chatty video very laid back I am doing my makeup throughout the video but I'm not really actually talking about the makeup I'm more so just talking about the questions so this isn't like a makeup tutorial or anything like that but um, I just wanted to you know sit down catch up with you guys talk with you guys see what's going on I am congested right now as you can tell so throughout the video I'm gonna sound like this so just bear with me <laughs> but now that I've gotten all of those disclaimers out of the way let's go ahead and hop into this video okay how do you stay fit you look amazing <laughs> first of all thank you that is very sweet to keep it a buck with you I have not been doing anything in particular I honestly know that it came from back when I got sick so if you have no idea what I'm talking about back in December like right as I was moving I started to feel like a real like a weird pain in my stomach so I went to the doctor got it checked out they did a CT scan and apparently I had like a stomach virus and they think it's just probably something bad that I ate because my intestines were like inflamed that i think is what kind of like kick-started it for me zero out of ten do not recommend absolutely not they do not lie when they say that getting a stomach bug will literally clean you out like you'll lose 10 pounds and i literally lost 10 pounds when that happened in a week like it was actually scary and i do not no so honestly that to me and i think in that moment when that happened i was going through a lot i had that stomach virus and then i was in the middle of a move so i was moving into this apartment uh by myself it was just a very transitional period a very stressful period in my life and a lot of things were happening at one time and i think i know all of that played a role in my weight oh and on top of that uh, I also have noticed that I no longer get bloated ever since getting off of hormonal birth control and I've noticed a huge 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 difference in my like stomach area I just feel like it's so much more like lean all those different things contributed to how I look now like how uh, lean and everything I look and you know it's crazy oh and on top of that uh, if you didn't know, I used to have breast implants. I got those removed in February. So I got a really nasty stomach bug that literally cleared out my intestines to the extreme. I was going through a move, a uh, transitional phase in my life that was like very, very stressful. Removed my breast implants, which that made also a big difference in my appearance because i went from having double d breasts that made me look a little bit more fuller and like top heavy to having an a cup now and so going from overnight not even overnight within a few hours going from a double d to an a is a drastic 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 difference and then at the end i ended up getting off of birth control so all of that stuff affects your weight like all of that stuff affects your weight my body i know is probably like what the actual f are you doing right now but that is pretty much how i've gotten to look how i look right now and the crazy part is that this is my natural weight right now the weight that i am is the weight that i used to be pre breast augmentation pre birth control pre all of that pre relationships <laughs> like pre stress 
um no i'm kidding not really but before any of that this was the weight that i was this is my natural weight 125 is like my that's always been my weight and that's the weight that i am right now 125 i've also noticed a big 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 difference in my digestive system now my metabolism's like so much quicker i just feel a lot lighter that was a long answer for that question but that's a question that i've been getting a lot like oh my gosh what workout routine are you doing i just try to keep it balanced but i'm i'm honestly not doing anything in particular i think it's just genes and how my body naturally is do you still go to pilates how do you feel about it no and i've been thinking of going back i know right now pilates is like very trendy you know because lori harvey I actually tried pilates before it became like super super big and i did really love it i just haven't gone back so we'll see if i uh decide to go back zoom you guys in a little bit Ooh. how do you pick your personal style slash vibe I would say to first start off with what you're most comfortable and most confident in. Then from there, uh, kind of pay attention to what you're drawn to. They did ask how I personally pick my style and honestly for me it was just going with what I felt more comfortable, most comfortable in. And then from there I noticed I really like neutrals. I like being able to like mix and match different things. Also now as I'm getting older I'm investing a little bit more in like quality timeless things i also find outfit inspiration and things like that on pinterest instagram from seeing other people out in the streets as well like oh i like how she looks in that like let me try it and don't be afraid that's another thing don't be afraid to try new things um, go to different stores and if you see a trend that you like try it out in the fitting room put on a whole outfit in there if you want to see how something looks and if you think okay i feel confident in this or whatever um just kind of play with it and see what you find looks mo most flattering on you and your body type and just what you prefer living alone pros and cons this is a good one pros i will say pros you get to come home to your spot and everything is left where it was before you left like nothing is touched there's no additional mess nothing is misplaced like everything is literally if i walk away right now and leave the house this is gonna stay how it's gonna stay which is a good thing and a bad thing because sometimes you wish it could just disappear and get put away by somebody else but <laughs> um yeah it's, it's definitely that's a pro hands down you get to organize and decorate exactly how you want you don't have to worry about you know is my roommate or is my significant other gonna like the way that this looks are they gonna feel like their their personality and things that they like are not displayed in the space that we live in like you don't have to worry about none of that you can do whatever you want to your space period you only gotta buy groceries but one person and one person only you only got to cook for one person you can come and go as you please whatever time you want it's just it, i love it and you know what it i can't lie it took me a while this time around to really get adjusted because at first it was tough again keep in mind this was because of everything that was going on in my life at that moment I've finally been at a point where I'm like I just feel so good like I feel excited to come home and cook myself dinner serve myself a glass of wine and unwind and I love being in my space now cons I'm sure there are a lot of other pros too I'm trying to think off top like what else is a pro I mean utilities are less expensive it's just a vibe and you get to create whatever vibe in your home in your space hosting being able to have your friends and family over cons you gotta pay everything yourself okay <laughs> everything you you literally fund your entire lifestyle you the whole rent all the utilities all the groceries in the fridge all the furniture all the products all the toilet paper all the cleaning supplies the flat screen tv like everything comes out of your pocket everything and as of lately i've had so many moments where i've sat down and i'm just like wow i'm really out here spending 
big girl money spending a lot of money monthly for what i have for my rent my responsibilities everything and i'm killing it like i'm doing it all on my own and it's actually sickening in the best way like it's so crazy to think about and i was just talking about this to my girlfriend i was like i remember when i was younger a few years back not even a long time ago when i was younger and when i was in college looking on zillow at apartments and i was like i'm never moving out at my parents house like i'm never gonna be able to afford this like i don't even understand not even with a roommate i don't understand how people pay this rent and utilities and get furniture and just or how people live on their own i was at a point where i was like i literally feel like i'm never gonna be able to do this and now i'm sitting here in my own beautiful apartment with furniture it's completely filled with furniture extra things that aren't even necessary that i don't need everything like i i can't complain and i sit here and think about it and i'm just like this is wild like i never would have imagined that sabrina would be sitting in her own apartment and paying every single thing on her own and still have money left over to enjoy herself and have fun and to save and to just live life like i you can tell me that i would have been like you're crazy but yeah that's a con <laughs> you gotta pay everything um by yourself obviously you know living alone it's very 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 easy to have moments of loneliness and that's completely normal and if you're somebody who wants to live alone or you live alone right now and you experience moments of loneliness just know that it is common it is normal i've experienced it myself um, you know, sometimes you want to be able to wake up to have somebody next to you or to have somebody in the next room, um, you know, listening to music or just like other noise in the house. But if you do have moments of loneliness, first off, give yourself some grace. Second, go do things outside of your space if that makes you feel more comfortable. Like, for example, me, one of the things that I'll do if I'm like, I don't feel like being home, I'll get my stuff and I'll go sit at a coffee shop for four hours and I'll just work from there especially because I work from home this is definitely a pro, also a pro and a con I work from home and I also live at home obviously like I spend a lot of time here at home I don't have a dog I don't have a significant other living with me I don't have any family members that live with me nobody it's just me myself and I no other being nothing no pets nada okay so sometimes i feel like it's hard for people to really understand where i'm coming from when i say like i because i went through a period where i was like i just don't feel like being home like i'm always home by myself and i say this to people all the time like i just i want to get out like i don't want to be in my house because i'm here all by myself all day every day whether i'm working or not some people don't understand because they're like but you have a nice place like what can you possibly be complaining about like your place is nice like i wish that i had you know your life and da, da, da. and i'm by no means am i complaining about my apartment and the life that i have at all but i'm just trying to get people to empathize that's the word right to empathize with what i'm saying and how i'm feeling and so people are like no like girl you you got it so good and so easy and i'm just like i'm just trying to say that sometimes i feel lonely and i don't want to be in my house because i'm here all the time and i personally don't know anybody in my personal life anybody in real life that i talk to that i know that is in my same exact situation living completely by themselves with no partner no kids no roommates no family member no pets nobody i don't know anybody at all in my personal life that lives the same oh and works from home uh remotely every day all day and that's not to say that my situation is worse or better than anybody i'm just stating what it is and saying like i don't know anybody that can relate to me in real life so it's, when i talk about it i sound like i'm complaining about something that everybody else would be like girl you have a really nice place I just don't feel like my feelings are valid sometimes in that case i know they are because i know there's people out there that feel the same way that i do it's just hard not being able to talk about people that i know pe talk to it 
what am I saying? Talk about it with people I know because they can't really like grasp the feeling. You know what I'm saying? Aside from that, I think everything else is a pro. Like you can go out whenever. And I've especially loved it with dating. Uh, it's just really nice to be able to go out on a date night and then you come back and you just you're in your own space and I don't know what it is about it just the vibe like getting ready to go to like a date night and then you go have fun you get to come back to your place you can have company over if you want to have company over and you have complete privacy um, you can leave your house and be gone for days on end if you want to and nobody's gonna be like why aren't you home or you've been out for days on end like da 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 nobody's gonna be checking for you because you no, can't nobody tell you nothing okay how do you feel about following trends and do you follow any trends um I'm not really like super hard on like uh, an opinion when it comes to trends. I'm not like, oh my gosh, I hate being a trend follower. I'm also not like, oh, I gotta be in the loop with all the trends either. Honestly, it's not that deep for me. Like if I like something, I'm gonna buy it and I'm gonna wear it. That's it. Like it's really not that deep. Some trends I love, some trends I don't. My opinion changes on certain things. For example, Uggs. I've had Uggs before when I was younger and I used to love them and then I went through a phase where I was like, ew, Uggs are ugly and I just would never buy them again and then uh, I just bought a new pair of Uggs like <laughs> a few weeks ago again. What areas have you noticed the most growth in as you reflect on your journey? That's a really good and deep question and there's actually another question here that's pretty similar it's what's the biggest lesson you've learned uh so far in your life and i'll kind of answer these both uh simultaneously because they're kind of similar as for the growth i would say i have really learned how to is that a real dog oh yeah it is anyway what was i saying oh yeah i think for me the biggest uh growth that i've noticed is learning how to separate my emotions i'm a very emotional being i'm somebody who's very in tune with her emotions i'm not afraid to like like i'm a crier uh not like on cue i'm not i don't i'm not a cry baby i don't cry for everything but like when it comes to confrontation if i need to tell you something there's a 90 percent chance that i'm gonna cry <laughs> before doing it before confronting you about it um or during it's just like i hate confrontation it makes me feel really uncomfortable it's i think it's because i don't want to be perceived as like a mean person but i also know that i need to express the way that i feel and put up boundaries or just say what i have to say and have an opinion about things without worrying about what are they going to think about me type of thing so i'm just a very emotional being sometimes i cry like you know if i'm giving a speech like at my mom's party i got like choked up i'm not afraid to like cry like and my family knows like one thing sabrina gonna do is cry and then as far as um one of the biggest lessons i've learned is that i am where i'm supposed to be and i really take that to heart when i look back at the different phases in my life and the things that i've experienced i've had so many moments of doubt and so many moments of why me or why is, why are things happening this way or why aren't things happening this way and now i'm at a point in my life i think it's maybe with experience uh growing up with age and things like that what is meant for you is what's here in the present right now i'm now about to be 29 almost 30 and i'm excited uh but i'm i'm 28 going on 29 and thinking back to my early 20s i used to hyper focus on things that i shouldn't have and i think that's i know that that's normal because i you know we hit our 20s and we're like what are we doing with our lives i think everybody has that quarter life crisis at 25 where you just like are going through it and you're like what am i doing with my life why you know if you don't have kids yet or a house or whatever you're like why don't i have kids yet why don't i have a house why am i not married why this why that and i've noticed it like me and my cousin talk about it all the time like we've all gone through our own version of like a quarter life crisis where, where we just feel like the world's falling apart and now i sit back and i can look back and be like you were only 25 and even right now i'm only 28 like there's still a lot of life to live we're just way too freaking hard on ourselves all the time for no reason and like i get it we don't live forever but 
we also can't expect to have certain things at a certain timeline because that's just not the way that life works in my early 20s i was like i want kids like i wanted kids at a really young age like and not young like young young but i wanted kids in my early 20s like i was like i just want i want to be a young mom here i am 28 living alone <laughs> no kids yet and i'm okay with that now i'm completely content with that now but I used to really really want that and I used to just be like I just I want to be a mom I want to have a house and the white picket fence and a, a great job or like and it's like God, damn. God, damn. friends getting upset that you're not available because adulting um okay this is a good a good question first and foremost i think setting boundaries is really really important in friendships in family relationships in romantic relationships work work relationships just setting boundaries but also being available that's part of being a good friend i'm sorry but you know give what you expect and again that's this is like an umbrella phrase for all the relationships i just mentioned but in order to have a good friendship and i'll stick to friendship because that's what the question is you have to be in some degree available emotionally physically and the reason why i say that is because like i said do as you want done to you if you are going through it if you are having a moment in your life where you just need somebody to lean on you just you need your friend there and i think it's really important to also give that to your friends and not do it because you're like oh one day i'm gonna i'm gonna need them no just do it genuinely just be a good a good friend a good human being and this is different for everybody and this goes into i was actually watching Aliyah's video where she was talking about uh low maintenance and high maintenance uh friendships and this kind of goes into that too because uh you may be a low maintenance friend that doesn't require much communication you can go months without talking to your friend and be totally cool and you know pick up where you left off or you can be a high maintenance friend that requires you know a little bit more attention i want you to check in on me weekly or come visit me or i want to hear from you or we need to hang out and me personally <clears throat> i feel like i've i've been both i want to say i've been both but I'm definitely more of a low maintenance friend. I have had high maintenance, and I even using low maintenance and high maintenance, I don't even like that, but we're gonna use it just for lack of better terms. But I have, I'm mostly a low maintenance friend, meaning like I don't, you don't have to like, we're grown. I know that you have a life, you have kids. Most of the people that I know, uh, friends, cousins, all have kids, uh, you know, significant others, jobs obviously everybody's busy like i have a job i have things that i need to do and so i'm not the type of person that like you have to check on me every day or every week or whatever i have gone months without talking to friends and then we catch up and it's like we pick up where we left off no hard feelings at all uh, but i also know that i have uh, people in my life who do prefer to hear from me more often and hang out and stuff like that and I, like I said, I've been both, but I'm mostly more of a low maintenance. I'm a higher maintenance friend when I'm going through things and I need somebody there for me. But at the same time, I'm also the person that's like, I don't really want to put my stuff on other people or I don't really want to like bombard anybody only when I'm feeling this way. And that's not even a bad thing though. Like if you are a low maintenance friend and you, <laughs> you turn high maintenance when you're like going through things or you're you know you need a little extra loving that's not even a bad thing that's normal like obviously if life is going good you're not going to need as much help or guidance or emotional support all in all just do as you want do to others as you want done to you when it comes to friendships and communicate an update on how you've been doing post having your implants removed i've been doing good so the pain's pretty much gone um, I did my little update on my here on my YouTube channel as soon as I you know got them out been feeling good I miss them <laughs> I cannot even lie 
I'm kind of like going back and forth about whether or not I want to get them again. But if I were to get them again, I'm not doing a whole video and update. And y'all just going to see me pop up with some cute little things. And that's going to be it because I'm tired. <laughs> like I had already been through this so many times. But knowing that I could have kept the implants and the issue could have been resolved without having to get them completely removed bums me out to this day i'm just like i could have still had them but it all happened for a reason i'm just glad that i'm no longer in pain i'm glad that the stitches were removed and that i feel good um yeah i i feel good it, it's taken some time to adjust to having a smaller bust and to seeing myself you know smaller chested now um but i don't know we'll see what i decide when it comes to whether or not I get them again are you planning on renewing your lease what are excuse me what are your plans <laughs> excuse me <laughs> Ooh, okay uh no i'm not planning on renewing my lease here as much as you know i like the apartment this is why i have not purchased a house yet because i just haven't found a spot that i'm like really satisfied with and i think um there's there's always a lot of pressure on people to buy homes and buy a home buy a home and invest and you're wasting your money and all that stuff and i've touched on this before but if you're not ready to buy a house don't buy a house like go city to city see what you like see what you don't like like for me i've always lived in like suburbs right now i live in more of like an industrial city and i'm realizing that i kind of don't want that right now i want to live i think i want to live in the city and with a younger crowd and we're with other young entrepreneurs and just being able to walk down the street to a coffee shop and that's what i'm craving right now and if i was in a house i'd be stuck i'd be sitting here looking crazy and just like no so that's kind of my plan i think i want to move to the city i've lived in la county my whole life but i've never lived in the city so i'm thinking of kind of exploring that I'm leaning towards that uh, a little bit. I know it's more expensive, but that's just that's just what I'm feeling right now. So um, that's kind of what's the plan. Let me change my battery though, because my camera's dying. Hold on. Okay, I think we're good. I kind of had to close my curtain a little bit because you were able to see the dust particles that were flying around. When you eat out alone, what do you do when you're waiting for your food to arrive? uh i'm not really particular about this honestly and people have asked me this because i go on a lot of solo dates i go eat by myself i take myself to dinner i'll get myself fully glam like i'm doing right now put on an outfit like i'm about to go see somebody and i'll just go eat by myself and i love it it's like the best thing ever <laughs> you're on your own time you you know the food's cheap because it's only one person and it's a good time like you're not rushing it's it's a vibe anyway i i'm not particular i'll be on my phone like i'm not like sabrina you cannot be on your phone you have to be looking around now if you're going on solo dates and you're being intentional let's say you're single and you want to go on solo dates because you want to meet people in a more like natural environment in person and all of that you don't want to go on a solo date and like literally just be staring at, staring at your phone for me like what i recommend that y'all do this is uh when sabrina was single advice get yourself cute put on a cute outfit put on some heels if you want or sneak just put on an outfit that you feel good in. perfume everything the whole nine like you're going on a date but go to a restaurant you can sit at the bar especially if you're trying to go and like meet somebody i would say sit at a bar don't be like head down on your phone because that doesn't really give people a chance to first of all look at how cute you look and second of all to approach you if you're looking down at your phone and you're not really paying attention and you just you just look disinterested in everybody else so it's cool to be on your phone or whatever like check instagram once in a while but try to be actively like looking around you know you're there you're there for a good time you're confident first and foremost i'm giving y'all my little tips <laughs> i'm giving y'all my little tips walk into a room feeling confident see see how i got like all the way up here on the camera like that's how you need to be walking around chest up confident just you know walk walk in there like you own the place 
look around you know kind of check out the environment sit at the bar be intentional about where you're sitting at the bar if you walk up and you see you know a handsome man sitting there like sit there you don't have to sit like on his lap or next to him <laughs> but you know sit a few seats down or sit across the way a little bit to the side so he's kind of like sees you um you know things like that like just if that's what you're going out to eat for because you want to be able to meet somebody in that way you don't want to be just stuck looking down at your phone like you just don't if you're like me though and you just enjoy your own company you want to just go out and have a good meal and feel good and just you know conversate with the bartender or with the waitress or whoever um you can be on your phone you can watch youtube videos plug in your airpods like it's not a big deal are you enjoying single life or are you dating uh i am dating that is my that's like the number one question like what's the tea and i'm like there's no tea i'm just i'm dating <laughs> like that's that's literally all there is um to it and then the next question we're now getting into more of like the relationship stuff the next question is do you see yourself sharing your love life again no what love you don't help me fight no what you not love you <laughs> no but no i don't uh see myself sharing my love life because when i think of love life th that's a lot like y'all love life is like vlogging with my boyfriend or having a podcast to get that's not happening like it's not going to be nothing like that but it's also not something where i am look at me i stopped doing my makeup i don't really have much uh left to do any anyway but my lip color so it's not even something for me that is like i'm trying to keep my relationship a secret i'm in a relationship people have seen me out in public with my uh, boyfriend and it's not something like oh my gosh go over there like they can't see you like no i still i say hey um you know we'll ch chat and it's it's not a big thing for me at all it's just more so the specifics and the details or like i'm not gonna have planned content i mean of course never say never but the, as of right now this is what i'm feeling i have a feeling i'm gonna feel it for a while like i'm not planning on planning content with my partner and like having them on here and doing the q and a's and the i have shared past relationships online and i've just found that it makes it really difficult when you're trying to move on from a past relationship or if you've already emotionally and physically left a relationship a while ago but people are still asking about it online and you're just trying to like move on with your life and people are like where's this person where's that person where's your ring what happened to this like it's just like y'all i'm trying to move on like it's just really really tough and it's like nobody wants to share uh whether they do it or not nobody wants to share um we broke up life update like no <laughs> like, and i just don't even want to have to deal with that not like knock on wood pray to god that that doesn't even happen or have to happen again or that i i have to experience that again but if i do like i want to be able to experience that you know by myself and not feel like dang i now have to tell all these people online that i'm single now or that this or that that it's just not really my ideal situation aside from that part i think it's really important to take your time with dating and to really be able to form your own opinion with who you're dating and like really go through the motions really date them without you know just trying to avoid as much outside opinion as possible because it's very 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 easy to post somebody and and by the way there's no right or wrong when it comes to this like i always see uh, all kinds of debates and conversations and i'm not posting my man and this girl's like it's not a big deal like why don't y'all post your man like nobody cares and i'm not sitting here saying one is right one is wrong I'm just saying, you know, I'm just talking about the topic. But it's just really nice. I've noticed now it's really nice to just date somebody 
and just really date them and not get caught up in the oh my gosh y'all are so cute y'all are gonna make cute babies and y'all you better not mess this up with her and with all the like internet aunties and uncles you know what i'm saying like as it is you already and <laughs> don't get me wrong i love that stuff because it hypes me up and it makes me feel good because i'm like yo me, me and my man are cute people are happy for us i love that and that's the part that i i adore about sharing a relationship online is that you have people that love your relationship and that look up to it and that um just love love like i'm a big lover girl and i love all the people that i follow i love watching their q a's and i love watching them on stories be cute together and all of that i love that i just don't know if that's really what i want right now um so with that um it's just nice to be able to date and form your own real opinion without all of the like outside um what's the word i'm trying to think of like all the outside um like hype yeah y'all give me the word i'm trying to say like you know with dating you already have your friends and your family that believe it or not help you form opinions like the way we came up is based on who we grew up with and how we were raised and all of those things influence our choices i'm getting super deep about something that's probably not that deep but i'm just y'all ask the question okay <laughs> um you already get those opinions and those thoughts and all of that and then imagine adding like the outside world and like people who you don't really know in real life like personally it's just it adds a level of a lot of difference like a lot of difference i wanted to touch on our generations like my generation generations younger than me a little bit older than me this whole social media thing is still very new people sharing their lives on social media is very new we are some of the first people to really experience the capacity to where social media can take us and like the things that social media can do so we are still very much learning and this is something that i'm noticing a lot more people that used to share their relationship a lot online are now noticing hey i want to pull back a little bit and i don't really want to share all the ins and outs because i just have learned that it kind of just doesn't work for me and some people you know maybe have been a little bit more private in the beginning and they're like i want to be more vulnerable and i want to open up and bring you into my life in that way and so everybody's just winging it like that's something that everybody has to understand because there are people out there that genuinely get upset and be like why didn't you share with me what happened and why y'all broke up and it's like y'all this is my life this is like real life like i'm actually going through it right now <laughs> behind the camera with the camera off like no and so <laughs> it's like you know we're all learning and we're all going through it and we're all figuring out what works for us what doesn't we got to give ourselves and each other grace like relationship how to leave a perfect guy in quotations because something is missing Ooh, here's another sabrina tip and i forget where i got this tip from by the way i'm almost done with my my makeup's pretty much um done but another sabrina tip and like i was saying i don't remember exactly where i got this from i'm pretty sure it was like tiktok or something somebody was talking about how uh with dating they created a list of things that they ooh, things that they want from their relationship or from their partner and you know this list you can make it however detailed you want however uh superficial you want if you want it to put on there he gotta be six eight and he gotta be a pro athlete and he gotta make six figures and you want to add all that to each their own but i recommend oh and i was watching uh b simone's podcast as well and she was talking about they had like a relationship coach on there i highly recommend watching that episode by the way and it's like two different parts but on there she had a relationship coach and they were talking about a pizza and uh, like this pizza method that she has where 
you have now this is not verbatim because i don't exactly how remember how it was but it's like you have the pizza and you have the base layer which is like the crust and the bread and then you have the sauce and you have the, the pepperoni and the vegetables and all the extra stuff all the extra stuff those are the superficial things that you can ask for and want in a relationship but those are uh not non-negotiables like you know you might have a friend that orders the pizza and they're like i like mushrooms jalapenos and ham and i like pineapple on my pizza and you might be like fine i don't want to deal with it i'll just take the pineapple off or i'll just take the, the ham off or whatever you got to be flexible with these more superficial things if you want somebody who's six eight and you find somebody who checks all the boxes but they're six seven you got to be like girl we, we gotta take it like we, it's okay <laughs> the one inch is not gonna make a difference even if it's a few inches like if he's gonna check all the boxes like come on come on don't be afraid to i like where i'm going with this question is don't be afraid to make a list like that of things that you want on there uh that's something that i did personally i was like okay this is what i want this is what i don't want and you got to stick to it like you have to be strict on yourself about it minus the superficial stuff i'm talking morals values uh red flags things like that um those are non-negotiables you know what i'm saying so how to leave a perfect guy because something is missing he is he really a perfect guy for you if something is missing if you have that list and something is missing let's say you have on there like he has to be a family guy and he has a terrible relationship with his family he doesn't get along with anybody he doesn't talk to anybody if that's a non-negotiable 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 why am i struggling to say that if that's a non-negotiable for you but he's a perfect guy everything else is good that is you can you can try to work around it but that if you have a big family and you love family vibe let's say he don't even want kids and you do like if that family dynamic is off there's a very high chance y'all are gonna bump heads now i'm not a relationship coach don't get it twisted but i'm just going based off of experience i'm going based off of things that i hear it's just something is just not going to work and especially with something like I want to get married he doesn't i want kids he doesn't or he wants kids i don't vice versa if they don't meet the core things the non-negotiables for you they just there might not be the person for you and that is completely okay you can go on to the next person and with that list and they might check everything off perfectly you can just be polite about it and just be like you know this isn't really something that i'm looking for what you don't want to do is just cut them off and just like cold turkey just stop talking to them. that's rude and that's just like that can really f somebody up mentally so just especially if they're really into you especially if y'all been talking for a while even if you haven't it's just being respectful and being like yo i don't think this is gonna work out i'm not really feeling it uh you could explain to them if you want to especially especially if you guys have been talking for a while just be like you know i you know you have a good vibe and this sounds like it's not it's not you it's me type of thing but you know just give them give them an explanation if you want to just be kind and be like hey you know this isn't really what i'm looking for right now um these are some of the differences that we have and like i hope you understand and all that stuff. now if they're like disrespectful to you or they're just being completely weird then do what you gotta do we're kind of getting to the end here we have a few more i was gonna do my hair let me just at least put my hair down i'm not even really going anywhere to be honest i was just like i want to do my makeup at least look cute on camera while i'm talking the balance of being taken care of by a man or by your man but also being an independent woman Ooh, so we're you know right now we're kind of going through this uh thing as well where it's like masculine versus feminine energy and like people are noticing that you know they might like certain things that are a little bit more feminine more masculine what kind of dynamic they want in their relationship and what they want to bring to the table and these are all i'm using these terms loosely because you know these terms mean different things to different people but i'm talking about it in the more like common 
way that they're being brought up right now in like social media. I'm a very independent person in the sense of like, I have my own everything. I come with my own everything. I can take care of myself. I'm also the type of woman that like, if I need to build a piece of furniture, I'm gonna build the piece of furniture. And I do those things because I have to. Even in, in relationships, a lot of times I've kind of like had to take more of that masculine role to like take over and take lead and take control and do those things. It's not even about building furniture, it's just about taking the initiative and being the provider, the caregiver, the that type of that type of energy and so for me it wasn't it's not even about like oh i'm an independent woman i don't need no man type of thing because do not get it twisted okay if i can have a man come over and build this piece of furniture for me i'm gonna do it like i've hired task rabbits to come and put things together because i'm just like i don't want to do this i don't want to do it because i've i've had to do it and i just i'm tired and i don't want to do it and it's not bad to be the woman that that wants to do all those things and that wants to take the lead and that wants to provide and that wants to it's just everybody's different and i i'm noticing right now that a lot of women and again i'm speaking about this in like men women terms and like uh masculine feminine terms um but i'm noticing that uh many women are more kind of shifting a little bit more and leaning more into the more feminine side where it's like I, I've had to be independent, I've had to do a lot of things on my own and I'm tired and I don't wanna have to do these things long term. And we're like, yeah, we, we love being independent, we love doing all those things, but sometimes we don't, we don't wanna have to always be in that survival mode type of thing or like that fight or flight mode where we're like, we have to do everything and don't help me. And, I got it all if you're finding yourself to be somebody who is very independent like you're the type that's like i can get all this done and i don't need help try to include your man because i'm going off base what she said try to include your man into things and i know <laughs> i know sometimes we can get impatient and be like forget it i'll just do it like you're taking too long i'll just do it and you gotta let them you gotta let them do it like we have to remember we are not like wired the same we men and women are like completely different we think differently everything is different and that's not to give an excuse to either person that's just like biologically we are different okay so communicate and i know we we hate hearing it but communicate and be like, hey babe, like I, you know, I find that I'm constantly like trying to do these things or I'm, I constantly am finding that I take care of everything around the house and I, you know, take out the trash and I take the car to get the oil change and I build the furniture and I just feel like, you know, I want you to take over a little bit more. And it's not about, I've learned this from my girlfriend as well. I don't want to say her name because I don't know if she wants me to be putting her stuff out there, but one of my girlfriends as well. Uh, I learned this from her. It's not about what you say. It's about how you say it. You don't have it. And I hate that. That works sometimes. But I would recommend trying a different route first. Or if y'all are, it can be something small. If you're at the dinner table and he's like, I got it, babe. And you're a very independent person. And you're usually the type of woman to be like, oh, no, babe, I got it. It's okay. I've been there. And that's something that I, I do sometimes too. Because I don't want my partner to feel like and it's not to say that he's gonna feel like this but i this is something i think to myself like i don't want him to think i'm like just trying to like get him to pay for everything i want him to know like i got you too if you need me to get get you uh most of the time he's gonna be like no i got it like it's totally fine but try to sometimes not do that it takes little things like that to just be like you know what thank you babe like i appreciate it and you know take it just take it for what it is. Your opinion on going 50-50 with a man. First and foremost, you gotta just do what works for you in your relationship. Now for me, I think my feelings, my opinions on this, on this have evolved with my dating life. Like I've dated men who were like, yeah, uh, let's do 50-50. And I also know men who are like, no, I wanna be more of the provider. It's never been the other way around where it's like, no, I want you as my woman to provide more and I don't. Like that's, I've never been in that situation so I can't really speak on that. 
but I've noticed that I've pretty much been okay with both but a lot of the times for me I've been okay with the 50 50 because I've known that a lot of the times that's kind of like more so what they're able to provide if they're able to pro provide more they would but that's just kind of like what works in the moment type of thing a lot of the men that i know even like not dating a lot of the men that i know would prefer to be the providers if they could be like if they could help it they would be like yeah i want to provide if i could pay for everything i'll pay for everything i got you like they don't want to have to split 50 50 they want to be able to bring a lot more to the table in the financial aspect for me in my opinion and this is coming from somebody who like i mentioned earlier funds i fund my entire lifestyle like i do everything financially on my own and i'm not dependent on anybody financially whatsoever uh, my opinion on 50 50 with a man for me personally that's not something that i would want i do think that that works for a lot of people and i have actually been in that situation of 50 50 but that's just not something that i personally would like aim for and my reason behind that and don't come for me i'm just saying if you have a different opinion that's totally we're good okay we're good we are good we are good you're safe I'm basing this off of the men that I know in my life or that I have known. Men usually prefer to uh, be the providers. And if they aren't the providers, it, I've noticed, affects the relationship, whether they want to admit it or not. That's just an observation that I've noticed that is not an overall umbrella situation. This is just what I've noticed and that's what i'm gonna say about that love you <laughs> where do you hope to see yourself by the age of 30 and anywhere you want to travel to yes i want to travel to a lot of different places still bali i want to go to turks and caicos i want to go to hawaii <laughs> there's a lot of places i want to travel i want to go to all the all the Instagram places but where do I see myself 30 years honestly I mean 30 years well hope to see myself by 30 I'm 28 I'm about to be 29 where do I see myself in a year and a half and that's not far uh it's really not that far maybe y'all think I'm younger do I look younger you think I'm skinny <laughs> Uh, by 30 you know what i i don't even want to answer the question to be honest because my life has shifted so much like my life has been very day and night one moment i'm engaged and i'm like in this path and the next moment i'm not so and i can laugh about it now because it's just like yo what is going on sabrina but like my life has been so up and down not even so up and down but i've just experienced a lot from one month to the other from one year to the other so honestly i'm leaving it out there like whatever happens happens i'm just going with the flow at this point like i told you guys earlier i'm not being super strict on myself about i want kids i want to be married i want this i want that what's going to come to me is going to come to me and i'm just going to be patient like that's honestly where i'm in my life i used to be the type of person that's like i want to set goals for five years and ten years and vision boards and all this don't get me wrong i still like doing that stuff and that stuff's really fun but i do that stuff with a grain of salt literally my life has shifted from one moment to another and it's like the craziest thing so i'm just like give me give me what i'm supposed to have and i'm gonna take it like of course still being intentional and i do still have goals for myself i still have things that i want and that i desire but i'm not really being a heavy hitter about it because i'm just like you're gonna make a plan and god's gonna laugh like that's literally the motto of my life <laughs> like that's literally the motto of my freaking life the sun is going down so i hope that you guys enjoyed this chatty video it is hot in here but um yeah i know it was chatty i know it was long again i'm gonna link the products that i use on my face 
uh, down below in the description box. I hope that you guys enjoy the questions. Thank you to everybody who submitted questions first and foremost. Um, I really appreciate it and for keeping it respectful and keeping it cute. <laughs> no, but thank you for everybody who did uh, submit your questions over on Instagram. If you wanna be a part of my next chit chat, get ready with me, make sure to follow me over there. That way when I post on my story a little Q&A box, you can leave your questions on there. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm looking forward to the healthy progressive conversation down below in the comment section. Um, I love you guys and I'll see you all in my next video.